The story that would culminate in a slap would also start with a slap. Well, Sonic slapping Tails around. This would ultimately lead to Tails heading out into the open sea, but not before being spotted what is conveniently labeled as a hidden robo-camera. While at sea, Tails would find a deserted island and say some of the most incel-sounding lines I've ever read in a Sonic comic. Wow, a gorgeous young female fox in distress? Have no fear, Tails is here. I I'm sorry, Tails, but that just reads so gross. That's gotta be like some of the worst text I've ever read in a Sonic comic. This fox that Tails meets would turn out to be Fiona Fox. Well, kind of, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, despite Tails' awkward lines, the two actually instantly fall in love. Have you ever wanted to see a close-up of two Mobians' mouths kissing each other? Well, here you go, you're cursed with this information too now. The two would get all lovey-dovey under a sunset, and it's here that Robotnik would reference Alfred Hitchcock before getting Fiona Fox to lead Tails into a trap. Robotnik explains that everything on this island, including Fiona, is actually a robot. Robotnik would then use actually a pretty cool visual gag to demonstrate that this trap is a roboticizer and it's going to roboticize Tails. And this girl who he thought loved him is actually going to pull the switch on him. Or will she? No, actually, she will. But does she regret it? Well, we'll find out in a bit. So, Tails would use his tails to clog up the machine. In doing so, he would manage to escape, but this would lead to Fiona socking Tails in the jaw. So, I mean, you tell me, I guess, if she regrets what she's done. Eventually, the two would get into a pretty large fight, which would lead them into the water, where Fiona would start to drown Tails in the water. But because she's a robot and this is salt water, she ends up rusting in place. Now, despite nearly being killed by this woman, Tails is inconsolable over the fact that Robotnik created the perfect woman and it isn't waterproof, and oh my god, Tails, chill. You act like you've never met a woman in your life who paid you any attention. Anyways, Tails would actually end up leaving this Robo Fiona here, as he would head out on an adventure that would culminate in him getting incredibly jacked, but that's a story for a completely other video that I've made. He promises to her, however, that he'll be back, and a tear comes out of Robo Fiona's eye because she knows deep down that Tails will never come back and she's going to be trapped here immobile forever because the writers would promptly forget about her right after this. We would later learn that this robot was actually a clone made from a real fox, the real Fiona Fox, who was a prisoner of Robotnik's. It would turn out that at one point in the past, she was in prison with both Mighty Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. She would end up being taken away after a riot to be cloned, and during that time, Sonic would actually conveniently show up and rescue Mighty and Ray. The gang would eventually get to Fiona, who was being held by Robotnik, but Ray, who was holding on to Robotnik's Power Stone, which I guess the Chaos Emerald was on vacation at this point, would end up getting blasted by Robotnik. And this shot would cause Ray to disappear into nothingness, and everything around them would begin to collapse. Sonic and Mighty would believe that Ray perished during this, and although his death would end up being greatly exaggerated, for the time being he was believed to be dead. And Robotnik, during all of this madness, would manage to escape with Fiona, where he would then later get to clone her. Eventually, Fiona would manage to dig out of her new prison, a la Shawshank Redemption, and it's here that she would meet Nick the Weasel. It's Knack, but with breasts. Now, all of this happened about six years ago from when the comics are presently taking place. So, this robot clone was actually a clone of a much younger Fiona who is now much older. Both Fiona and Nick would become treasure hunters together, with Fiona also joining in illegal fighting tournaments with Bean and Bark, and weirdly, amongst pretty much all of her adventures, Fiona would find herself almost always beaten by Rouge, who was always just one step ahead of her. Now, during this time, Tails would still have feelings for Fiona, although this Fiona never knew Tails in any way like this. And here's the thing. Tails still does have that same Robo Fiona who seems to have feelings for him, but she's still trapped on that island, and I mean, listen, she's totally forgotten about, so I mean, we may as well just stop mentioning her. Now, either the real Fiona is oblivious to Tails' amorous affections towards her, or she's trying not to feed into it, but either way, it's a very one-sided relationship with Tails just constantly fawning over her. It's a one-sided relationship also that would get much, much messier once Sonic would get involved. Eventually, Tails would be out and about when he would spot Sonic in the woods, but upon closer inspection, he would see that Sonic is making out with Fiona. This, understandably, would upset Tails a great deal, and he would go on to explain that he loves her, and after having met his robotic double, he hoped that one day he would get to be with her again. 
Fiona, of course, has to let Tails down, as she explains that the age difference between the two of them is just too much, and that Tails didn't actually meet her as a child. He met a robot who was there to fall in love with him. She explains to Tails that she doesn't have any romantic feelings for him, and she would prefer someone closer to her own age, which is why she's with Sonic. This really, really upsets Tails and breaks him as he storms off. It's honestly hard not to feel bad for Tails in this scenario, considering that Sonic did this without giving Tails any kind of heads up or having some kind of conversation and instead just letting Tails stumble onto this. Obviously, this Fiona is different, but it's pretty clear even to Sonic that Tails has feelings for Fiona still, and it would make sense that he should at least have a talk with him. But don't worry, Tails. Sonic and Fiona would hardly last very long. These two would continue dating, and one day, while out and about, they would find Tails, who is being held hostage by a man whose name is, I kid you not, Sleuth Doggy Dog. Right after this, Scourge would show up, and for those who saw my Scourge video, you probably have a pretty good idea of what is to come. But if you haven't seen it and you want to learn more about this green Sonic, well, be my guest, but maybe watch it after you're done this video. While fighting Scourge, Scourge would inform Sonic that Fiona is actually his girlfriend and she's faking it with Sonic. Sonic would then beat up Scourge and escape with both Tails and Fiona, but he would be clearly bothered by what he heard from Scourge, even if he doesn't want to believe it. If there's one thing that Amy would teach us though, is that you really should mess with Sonic. And after having learned that Fiona was possibly cheating on him, Amy is out for blood as she goes on the attack towards Fiona. Sonic would ultimately end up breaking this up, and he would talk one-on-one -on -one with Fiona in the woods to sort this out. It's here, while being followed by Tails in the sky, that Sonic would learn the truth, and well, the truth hurts. Turns out that Fiona has a thing for bad boys. Physically, she likes Sonic, so why not go with his green evil counterpart? Upon learning this, Tails would rush down and, like, so pitifully beg Fiona not to go out with Scourge. This moment here, with Fiona kindly talking to Tails, builds up to one of the two biggest slaps in the Archie Sonic comics that absolutely sends Tails flying in what looks like such a ridiculous panel. Like, seriously, at this point in time during the comics, Tails was treated so badly. Like, he went from being anything but dignified as he's constantly just crying and upset and just really, really pitiful. It makes me feel bad because like Tails can be written a lot better than I feel like he's being written right now. Now with that, Fiona and Scourge would have a short tussle with everyone, but ultimately they would escape through a warp ring. While away, the two of them would end up teaming up with another fan favorite, which is Dr. Fenativus, and they would help him kidnap Knuckles in order to create the next Enerjack, which is a whole other subject, quite long, I've covered it also in another video if you're curious about that, but the short story is basically that they would succeed in creating this new Enerjack, and much to their shock, it would be Knuckles who would go on to destroy a ton of stuff as one of the strongest villains Archie has ever seen. She'd also later join a team of B-list villains known as the Destructix, but this was pretty short-lived before she and Scourge would join the Suppression Squad, which is the alternate universe counterpart of the Freedom Fighters. This Suppression Squad would later end up assaulting the main universe with the help of Fiona, who was now the queen of the Anti-Mobius, with Scourge being the king. Which, I mean, talk about falling upwards, am I right? And we're gonna fast forward through the Scourge arc because I've already covered a good deal of it, but essentially just know that Scourge is now in an interdimensional prison and Fiona is back with the Destructix. Actually, she's not just back with the team, but she's now in charge of the team. And interestingly, there'd even be a point where she would team up with the Freedom Fighters in order to take down Conquering Storm, which is somebody who works for Eggman and is honestly a pretty cool villain that one of these days I need to get to. It's pretty interesting seeing Fiona come back for this and using her evil team to team up with the Freedom Fighters in order to take down a common enemy. I, I dig this kind of stuff. So here's the deal. Fiona would go on to do one last big mission. But instead of ending her story with a bang, it is unceremoniously cut short and just ends with this sort of depressing fizzle. I'm going to let me from a year ago actually explain this, because although these are two completely separate videos on two completely different topics, they're of course linked by one writer who at the time was no longer working for Archie but would completely ruin everything, so take it away me from the past. Here's a running theme across Archie Sonic. 
we've reached the classic stage where Ken Penders ruined a lot of stuff with his lawsuit, and so this story kind of gets cut short. So while Fiona would start a really cool sounding heist to bust Scourge out of prison, we'd actually never get to see a conclusion to this story, and it really sucks because it feels as though this happened just as Fiona was starting to make it on her own. For a character that gets brought up pretty often with fans wanting to learn more about her, I've gotta say there's a surprising lack to Fiona as a character. And honestly, it feels like she spent most of her time with the writers unsure of what to do with her, and she mostly just hung on to a guy's arm. Once the writers did actually figure out an interesting place for Fiona to go and become a bit more of her own, well, the series was rebooted and she was Thanos snapped into the ether, which is really unfortunate because I found that her story was getting really interesting at this point. With that, we've reached the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it. It's a broader look at a character that's been asked a good deal of times. I'm going to just throw somebody's name up who asked for her the last time, but as of right now, I'm actually not sure who that was. So congratulations to whoever's name has shown up on the screen. I'm sorry I didn't get to read your name out loud. If you enjoyed this video and you think it deserved any kind of like, subscribe, whatever, feel free to do so. However, at the end of the day, I just hope that you have a good one.